What's going on everyone? Today we're having an in-studio segment where I'm going to be showing you how to tie your own lures. Now, we're going to be using all sorts of natural materials. It's very, very simple, very easy, and hopefully I'll get you into a new hobby today. Hey! So here are bucktails, right here. We've tied literal bucktails onto jig heads like this. And um, there's all different sizes that you can use, all different shapes. Uh, but today I'm going to be showing you how to tie on a bucktail jig head right here, just like this. Pretty heavy one. This is, I think, an ounce and a half or two ounces, something like that. Now, these bucktails cost you about eight to ten dollars a pop in general. But if you make it yourself, you can get this done for two to three dollars for one of these lures. And there's all sorts of things you can do to mimic. This one is supposed to look like some kind of shad or a, a bait fish. Whereas this right here, I made to look like a shrimp. You see how this is a shrimp right here? Look at these eyes right here. I made that with monofilament line that I, I used a lighter to, to burn the ends. But that's supposed to look like a shrimp right there. All sorts of different colors that you can add, different kinds of materials. This is feather right here, bucktail, flash, chartreuse bucktail. Um, this is chartreuse line that I used to tie it around. But yeah, it's expensive to continue to buy these lures. So. During the winter months like right now, I like to tie up as many of these as I can for the upcoming season. And you really don't need that much. You don't need that much stuff. You need a vise, you need scissors, a bobbin, the materials that you want to tie with, and the hooks that you want to tie with. All right, so we're going to be tying onto weighted jig heads here. The awesome part about tying your own baits is that you can target whatever you want. If you're going for bigger fish, tie a bigger one. This is really good for striped bass and pretty much any kind of bigger predator fish, right? Whereas this, probably good for trout, speckled trout, stuff like that, redfish. But keep in mind, I can also tie on something this small, right? For smaller pan fish. Maybe I should tie a little micro jig. Comment below, which one would you like to try? The bucktails or the shrimp? I've just caught so many fish with my own bucktails that I've tied over the past six months. I really wanted to share with you guys how to do this because it has saved me so much money. Instead of going to buy these lures, I just tie them up myself. And honestly guys, it's really satisfying to catch it on your own because you know you've tied it up yourself, you've customized it yourself, you've put the colors you want, you made it the profile size that you want, and then you actually go and catch a fish on it. It's just very rewarding. One of my favorite hobbies right now. Today I'm going to show you how to tie something like this, which could represent any kind of bait fish fluttering through the water um, that's bleeding out. I like this blood trail right here. I've caught a lot of fish on, on this particular one right here, and it's still in good condition. First, I want to show you how to break it down. When you see a lure that you like, or a bucktail that you like, or a pattern that you like, it's, it's important that you take a, actually take a look and see how it was built. So now if you take a look at this, it looks like this feather is laid down first because it's all the way on the bottom. This also looks like it's on the bottom as well. So it looks like we started with these two feathers first tied down and then we put the bucktail hairs around it. So let's try and, let's try and replicate something similar. Okay, so we're gonna start with this. The jig head. I'm gonna put that in and clamp it down tight. That's important. It needs to be tightly clamped down. And I got this vise for like 15 bucks, really cheap from Bass Pro, because I didn't know if I was gonna be into it or not. It turns out I am. But this vise is okay. It's just, it's kinda of hard to tighten. But it's been doing its job the whole time, so I can't really complain. There are vices that go for 100, 200, 300 dollars. This is just a $15 one. All right, before we start tying this, let's start by listing out the stuff that we need, the absolute essentials. If you wanna tie up your own lure, by the end of the day, these are the materials you're gonna to need to have. One, a vise. I got this one for $15. It's mediocre quality. Gets the job done for sure. Two, bucktail hairs or some kind of fur that you wanna tie with in the colors that you want. Now, I got a variety pack of different colors, something like 15, 16 bucks, not too expensive. Three, you're going to need jig heads. You're going to need weighted jig heads. 
depending on what size fish you're targeting or where you're fishing, you're going to need some kind of jig, weighted jig head. Four, you're going to need a bobbin with thread. Any kind of thread. I'm, I'm, using, I'm using sewing thread right now. Whatever color you want to use. And this bobbin here will allow you to work with the thread very easily. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. Next, you're going to need a whipping tool. This tool allows you to quickly tie off your knots. Um, I'll show you exactly how I use this in a second as well. You also need a pair of sharp scissors. You have to make sure that they're sharp because it needs to cut the hair very precisely. All right, the final thing that you need is two-part epoxy. Two-part epoxy is what will keep your thread from coming apart. This is what keeps all your fur on your hook. And that's pretty much it. Other than time and patience, that's really the bare minimum of all you need. <clears throat> so now we've got the bucktail on the vise. It needs to be secured tightly. First, you want to get some thread down onto where you plan on putting the bucktail fur. So that's going to be right here for me. This will allow you to put the bucktail hair on without it being like a slip and slide. You, this will keep the fur in one place. It's kind of like the base. I'm going to trim that off. And this is what the bobbin does. It allows you to continue to work with it and it just hangs around there. Right? So you don't have to manually do it. Um, it's a very useful tool. I'd say pretty necessary tool. And you hold it like this. Kind of like a... You hold it like this and you go around just like that. And when it runs out of line, it just starts pulling straight from here. You see? And you want to keep it controlled. You don't want to go all over the place. I like leaving a distance like this. Don't be afraid to take some line back in if you have too much. The key here is to have control. See, if I take too much like that, just roll it back up. Now, looking at this, I'm going to put down my feathers first. And you guys don't have to do it with feathers. I just have them, so I'm going to tie it with feathers. So I like these long ones because it, it leaves it, it makes the bait a lot longer. You see how long these are? So I'm going to cut it just like that. I'm going to put this guy at the bottom, right here. So I'm going to lay it down just like that. And then I'm going to start wrapping around the feather. Just like that. And before you secure it all the way down, make sure it's in the position that you want it. Because after you secure it, it's hard to go back. Okay, so now it's secured here. That's the first part. I've got the first feather down. Now I'm going to add some, some red like this blood right here. So I'm going to get a big poofy red feather next. Now you want to pick one with the correct base. This is looking a little janky here. I don't really want to use that. You don't want this to be too thick. Something like this is very hard to attach because it's so thick. You see that end? That's better. So I'm going to just lay it on top. Do the same thing. Do a couple of wraps, then I'll readjust it. Okay. So now the feathers are in. Now we're going to lay in the bucktail fur. And notice how long this profile is. I want this to be a pretty long bait fish. So maybe like a five, four or five incher right here. So I want to cut the appropriate amount of bucktail hair off of this white right here. So that it's long enough. I could take the hair right here, but this is kind of short. I want to take the hair right here because it's longer right here. First of all, when I cut it, make sure you don't cut too much. Cut just enough, just like that, okay? First step, after you cut it, clean it off. Pinch it tight and clean it off because you don't want these stray hairs to fly right off. Especially when you, when you secure it down, you want all these external hairs to come off. Now we're just gonna start layering it. a Little bit at a time and I'm gonna start at the bottom. So I'm going to do a couple of wraps. I'm going to do one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now it's on somewhat securely so it won't fall off. Now I'm gonna adjust how the bucktail hair looks. So I'm gonna spread it out a little bit, just like that. So it's kind of covering that red a little bit. That red is just an inside color. The outside color should be white. That's just how I imagine it in my head. Look at that, it's so satisfying. So now once you've got that, put a couple more wraps, and it's time to move on to the next chunk of fur. Now I can keep adding to that, or I can start going around. I think I'm gonna go on the side this time. Again, we're gonna cut hair that's long, because I, I want this to be a longer profile bait. Like that. Important step is to clean it off. I'm doing this by pinching both ends and pulling so that all the external fur will come off. Now I'm gonna put it on the side. Now that it's secured on, I can rotate and adjust this. Okay, so now look at how it's it's turning out now. We're, we're slowly but surely working our way around and completely covering it with fur. Uh, maybe on the top we do a different color. Maybe we do like a blue. Nah. Maybe we do another red. Nah. So I'm going to finish putting the white around the sides and we'll finish out the top with a different color. Okay, I'm gonna put a strip of yellow on it too. Just, just to put it around the outside, give it a little more depth in color. Now, just for the top, we're gonna to do gray, right? Oh, but before I do gray, I'd like to put, notice on this one, there's flash in it as well. I wanna put this flash before I put in that last layer. So that the flash looks like it's on the inside layer. So I'm going to do some of this color right here. I'm just going to attach that to the top. Put some more. This flash is important because it really catches the eye of the, the fish that you're targeting. It's shiny and beautiful. Okay, so now after you're done, just trim it up. And now we're gonna put the final color on, which is gonna be a gray. Because the top of a herring or the top of a, a shad, they have this darker spot on, on the top of them. I think this gray actually will be perfect for it. Just like that. Now this is already too much bucktail hair to... I don't like putting this much on at a time. So I'm going to split this in half first. Just because... There's no rush. And if you put too much on at a time, it messes it up. So I like to do just a little bit at a time. Just like that. Okay, now that we've got all the fur that we want on here, 
Make sure you adjust it one last time to make sure this is exactly how you want it to look. So now that you have it all wrapped up, you want to tie it off using this tool right here. And this tool is a fancy, I'm going to show you how to do it slowly. And you might need to pause and re-watch this. So you want to put this tool like this, hook it right here, and make this triangle like this. You see this? Now you're going to bring this hoop in and around. Around again. And that's it. Now it's tied off. That was simple enough. I'm going to cut this. And now it's time to glue it. This stays wet until you mix it together. Mix it up. As soon as you mix it up, you've got about five minutes before it starts to dry. My technique is just to put a glob on like that and then just start spreading it around. Now you want to coat it evenly and just let it dry. So I'm going to let I'm going to start spinning this for about probably 5 more minutes and then it should be dry. Now I'm spinning it because if I don't, it starts to droop down. Right? The the epoxy is not dry yet. It'll start to droop. In order to prevent that from happening, loosen up your vise a little bit and just let it air dry a little bit first. Boom! Look at that! That looks nice! Now I'm going to try and use this for striped bass. Anyways, it's really fun to tie these custom ones because you can customize it to however you want. It's really fun to do in the middle of the winter and I hope I can get you into this hobby. It's been a really fun time for me and um, I think it'll be a great time for you too. If you got nothing to do in the winter, give it a try. Hey, we make it our business here at Hay Skipper to help as many people as possible. If you want to learn how to fish, we've got all sorts of different kinds of tutorials on our website, hayskipperfishing.com. If you tie one of these up based on my tutorial, please send us some pictures. I want to see what you guys are tying up too. Tag us on Facebook, tag us on Instagram. We're here to talk. We're here to help. See you next week, guys.